Now, to present the L. Ron Hubbard Lifetime Achievement Award, please welcome to the stage contest director, Joni Labaki. The L. Ron Hubbard Lifetime Achievement Award is bestowed to individuals for their outstanding contribution to the fields of the art and writing. It has in the past been presented to luminaries and masters Jack Williamson, Frederick Pohl, Algis Budrys, Frank Frazetta, Anne McCaffrey, Frank Kelly Fries, Robert Silverberg, Larry Niven, Jerry Purnell, Charles Brown, and Gregory Benford. This year, we are presenting the award to a very special individual and friend. He is the author of science fiction classics Ender's Game, Ender's Shadow, and Speaker for the Dead. Yes. And also writes contemporary fantasy, biblical novels, poetry, and many plays and scripts. He has won the John W. Campbell Award, the Nebula Award twice, the Hugo four times, and the 2008 Margaret Way Edwards Award for Young Adult Literature. He has joined the contest in its third year when he was a guest instructor at the Writers' Workshop at Sag Harbor, Long Island, along with Algis Budrys, another newcomer, Tim Powers. A, a consummate writer and a judge of the Writers of the Future contest since 1994, he is also a passionate teacher who has been an inspiration to countless aspiring writers through his books on writing and his literary boot camps. For nearly three decades of dedicated service to discovering new talent, it is now my greatest honor and privilege to bestow the L. Ron Hubbard Lifetime Achievement Award to Orson Scott Card. very kind. I had to look inside to see if they'd filled it with anything. <laughs> but they know I'm a Mormon and they weren't sure at all what they could put in it. <laughs> I admit that when I first heard about the Writers of the Future contest, I was skeptical. Uh, I don't think of writing as a competitive sport. Um, but then the first anthology came out. And when it came out, I was writing a regular review column of short fiction for uh, Richard Geis's science fiction review magazine. And for that, I was reading every single short story published in magazines and anthologies, and I couldn't leave out Writers of the Future. I was so impressed with the quality of work that appeared in that book that ever since then, I continue to give it the same rave review I gave it at the time. <coughs> I tell all of my writing students that if they're writing science fiction or fantasy, their stories should always go first to the Writers of the Future contest, and only if the contest does not declare it a winner should they submit it to anyone else. And I realize that this means that all other magazines and anthologies are relegated to publishing Writers of the Future losers. Um, <laughs> so be it. Back when Harry Potter was ruling the New York Times bestseller list, uh, there were a lot of whiny babies who complained that it was taking up all the slots that real grown-up books should have been taking. <laughs> and so they created the uh, children's book list in order to uh, move Harry Potter out of the way of those whiny babies. And uh, <laughs> I always thought that they misunderstood the whole point of this, that, uh, well, I knew quite a few kids who had been non-readers before Harry Potter who had become avid readers because of Harry Potter. And uh, I figured that J.K. Rowling's career existed in order to advance mine. <laughs> in this uh, 
universe of writers, a very small, small universe, a pocket universe, there are never really any rivals. Anyone who becomes a reader because of one author's book becomes a hungry, voracious predator searching for more books to devour. The nice thing is that they're fairly easy to chase down. Um, they stay where you set them. I confess that there are some that have been sitting beside my bed for decades now. No, we do not move them to vacuum under them because they could not possibly collect dust there. So there are times when I solipsistically think that perhaps Larry Niven's career existed only in order to create a readership for my work. But then I decided that reading Niven is its own reward. And uh, we all exist in order to tell our lies to whatever group of believing, caring readers we can find. I want to make sure I don't leave out anything I wanted to say because, God forbid, you should uh, miss any of my thoughts. But uh, <laughs> what I really love about the Writers of the Future workshop is that the contest operators look out for these writers for many years to come. That list uh, of achievements of former winners, they didn't have to. Uh, they didn't have to do a lot of research and Google everybody's name and put it all together. They only had to walk into the room where they collect all the works of past winners and just scan the shelves. They're watching all along because they really do care about advancing the careers of these writers. Not because they're interested in the well-being of their families, though I'm sure they are, uh, but because they care about the field of literature, about what literature is going to become, about what it's going to do to our culture. It's the writers who create our culture. It's the writers who make up the movies. They are the authors of the films, not the directors, unless they're the same person. It's the writers who write all of the political speeches, because we all know how badly the politicians do when they go off book. It's the writers who make up the world. And the Writers of the Future contest looks for people with the best imaginations, who can see through the possibilities of their strangest and best ideas, and tell stories that intrigue us and involve us. So to be honored by this group means a great deal to me. To be given a Lifetime Achievement Award is a kind of mixed honor. <laughs> I was talking to Larry Niven just a few moments ago, and I promised him that because I was being given this award, I would die at this podium tonight. <laughs> I, I could not think of a better way to maximize the publicity of this event. <laughs> and Larry Niven wholeheartedly agreed. <laughs> but I'm sorry, Larry, uh, apparently this is not as emotional as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> My heart is in fibrillation right now, but it always is. So. Uh, uh, apparently nothing untoward is going to happen, uh, except that I am grateful to receive this award, grateful to have my work in the past recognized, and I hope that in the future I will continue to bring honor to the award as the award now brings honor to me. Thank you very much.